by charging more. It's not just possible. You can't charge more so that you make more money. In a perfect market, you have no control over price because there are many buyers and sellers. All that, all those conditions for a perfectly competitive market. So we are talking of uh, maximizing profit. These producers, they want to maximize profit. They don't do it for free. They want to make money. But I showed you that it's not possible in a perfect market to rely on uh, an issue of price and say, ah, I'll, because it has costed me to produce this, it has been expensive, so I will charge so much. You have no control over the price. So we saw that in a perfect market, you have two options. Reduce your costs of production. Make more profit than anybody else. Or produce a lot. Profit is TR, total revenue, minus total cost. So you can play around with that to get an answer which should be higher. This is algebra. This is it's nothing complex. So, unless you have some power, then you can. If you have some power over price, then price also becomes a third option. Because then you can control your total revenue. Because total revenue is equal to price times quantity. 100 bags of mess times price. That will be your total revenue. If you cannot control P, you can only control Q. And because profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. If total revenue is, has not changed, you can still more, more, make more profit by reducing your total cost. That one which has a minus sign. TR minus TC. If you reduce the value of that thing which has got a minus sign, your answer will be higher. Professor Naga, are we together? Yeah. So, but if you have power on P, you can control your total revenues by manipulating your P. Because total revenue is P times Q. P is price, Q is quantity. There are situations where people have power, businesses have power. One example is when you are a monopoly, you are the only producer, you can charge what you want, because people have no option. It's only one seller. So your profits can be manipulated either way, by attacking the TTR or attacking the TC. Because you have got a lot of power. You can attack the P, make it bigger. So your total revenue can be bigger. One thing that I really find funny 
is that a lot of you don't write anything. I don't know how you remember things. <coughs> I look around, maybe three or four people are, making, are taking notes. When I'm speaking, whatever points which are coming out, put them down. That's what university life is about. So, okay. Um, so we also looked at what are the justifications for profit? Why should companies make profit? What explanation is there for a company to be allowed to make profit? So we looked at the theories. Theories are explanations or justifications. Explaining the relationship between variables. A relationship that is always correct and always true. So theories are about that. So what should explain profit? How can you explain profit? So we saw that profit can be explained as a compensation or a reward for hard work. So we have the entrepreneurial compensation theory. Come in. And don't make noise when you are sitting down. Lift your chairs. So one theory is that it's okay. It's okay to make profit. It's not immoral. It's not a sin to make profit. Because profit is a reward. It's a compensation. Just as when you go and work, you find a job somewhere. It's not a sin for you to get to, to receive a salary. It's not immoral for you to get paid. Because you have worked, so it is a compensation. The same thing with a business person. You are being compensated for that hard work you are doing. Then we had another theory which was the theory of risk and uncertainty. Be because you are taking a risk, you can lose money. And sometimes you are not sure whether the business will work. There's so much uncertainty. So you should be rewarded. You should be paid for taking a risk. If you are not rewarded for taking a risk, you will not. And that's why they say, the bigger the risk, the bigger the profit. And you remember I gave you the example of Chamba. If you want to be in the business of selling Chamba, you know what it means. High risk. But if, if you are lucky, you become a millionaire. So the higher the risk, the bigger the reward. You are taking a risk. Businesses take risks. You say you want to go into farming. You don't even know where the rains will come. But meanwhile, you have bought your fertilizer, you are you have employed people to till the land, kukapanga mizere, chan chani, vura esa na bwere. You are taking a risk. Because it is possible, the lands, friends don't come, and you have already put money on there. You lose it. Okay? 
Then there's theory of innovation. When you are, you think outside the box. You can get rewarded for that. You can find a, a very strange way of reducing your cost of fertilizer, for example. People are going to go into the shops and buy fertilizers. You, you come up with your own idea. Very innovative. And you can get rewarded for that. Then we had the fourth theory. Was, this was, you have the power. Remember? We said, if you have the power to control P, if you are the only producer, for example, we can explain profit as being because you have the power. You are in a monopoly. You are the only one, like you. or when the market is generally not perfect, an imperfect market. One good example, for example, if there is barrier to entry and exit. So you will be the only one in there, or just a few of you. Remember, an example that we gave for barriers, to enter and exit. The free market, a perfect market, should not have barriers. Should not prevent people from entering the market or leaving if they are not happy. One good example is if you want to go into Kaunjika business, go into town, the market in town. You have bought your bills. You say, ah, I want to do Kaunjika business. I'll be doing it in the market in town. You will see if you can do it. What happens there? Aguza would have, ah, ah, abaya. You are fellow business people. You will say, I'm going to take my good bench. My bench is going just to find a place where you can sell, and that is a public market. It doesn't belong to anybody. Why should somebody... Thank you for uh, being... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what language I can use. When you knock and people don't open for you, what do you do? Do you still enter? <laughs> you are knocking and nobody is answering. You still enter? No. But because he is a class president, so maybe he has a lot of powers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay? So that is a barrier. So they are, they are trying to protect the market. In, even in town, that market is a public market. If you want to go into a business to sell fresh fish, you want to be selling there. There's resistance. bench. Do you own this place? No, they don't. That is a that market is for all of us. But if I want to go and sell my fresh fish there, the people who have been there before, they they, they, they will think as if they own that place and stop you from Those are prohibitive. Barriers 
which should not be there. So the market is imperfect. Sometimes an imperfection can come from information. Information is not freely flowing. Where, for example, where is tomato cheap, the cheapest in town? Is it Waka Waka? Does everybody know? If some people have information that they're hiding it, the market will not be perfect. Because perfect market, we assume free and perfect information to everybody. So if, if you are charging more, if you are trying to control P, you're charging more, everybody knows that you are charging more and somewhere else is cheaper. So everybody will go to that place where it is cheaper. You will have your things and nobody will buy from you. So you'll be forced to come down, to be in line with the others. Because there's free information, free flowing information. But if there's some gap, then the market will be imperfect. Opposite of a perfect market is an imperfect market or a market failure. Okay, so this can actually give you what we call abnormal profits when you are operating in an imperfect market or, for example, when you have the powers to set the prices. Come in. Okay? Now, what I wanted to cover today is, even though we know that businesses are after making profit, Okay? They don't do it for free. So we know that when you are saying they want to make profit, they want to make as much profit as they can. That's the motive. Profit maximization. Maximizing profit. But there are exceptions. Not all businesses live by making as much profit as possible. So, in practice, a lot of companies do not aim at maximizing profit as their only motive. Some companies, some businesses have other goals or aims for their existence. They have to make a profit. That's, that's true. But they don't live to maximize profit. Making a profit to survive is different from making sure you kill. You make a kill. It's different from you Day and night, you are th thinking of how can I make the highest profit? Some companies are not like that. They have other aims, other goals. So instead of maximizing profit, instead of dreaming and living to maximize profit, the, some of them will say, ah, as long as we make profit, they put some kind of a limit. And that's why you see a lot of companies or business people, once they make, they st they make so much money, they start giving it free. giving it to other people free, to look good. 
anyway. I mean, they do good things, eh? I, do, I don't think, I think I'm being unfair to say, I'm a funatizo on a dan habit. But uh, I think they are doing a good job, a lot of rich people, because they have made so much money, they have made so much profit that they, they begin to put a limit. We are going to zingo tandizavan. Is it panga profit? Come Let's give it back. So you find that in a Bill Gates, as in a Warren Buffett, and then, 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 I'm a perega, my billions and billions. Warren Buffett, for example, and in a good out of his uh, almost 150 billion, out of an hour, pass on 10 percent. The rest are perega, go on. If he was my dad, I would have been angry, right? Ah, in Mungoni Pasa Deni Pilisin, this was in Pasevat. So, it's, that is happening. You have seen also Konkuno, my bank, my company, and Diana, they do what is called so, corporate social responsibility. Basically, they are making so much money that they want to help others. Do we have good examples of individuals here in Malawi? Maybe Achinampingajira, Winanda. Huh? Ushiri. Okay. Shall we know? I will not comment on that. Okay. We are talking about businesses, eh? So, yeah, so. Yeah, they, they, we also have it here. That some people have decided to say, I think Ndramandu Kupanga Zambit. Some of it should go away and give it out free, for example. Uh, I don't know what you do. Guguri Samandazi Kapena Kupika Mandazi. Mesa Samandazi Kupika Pika Zuru, Mapika Mau. Um... As a as a as a side dish, uh, this um, I don't know. Kodi agama agama vitenga vindama vao profit vina kupanga vao vambiri mbiri. Nku 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 support a a if you want to rampira babandiro, is that a good idea? <laughs> I don't know. In here, I would have loved if they went out and found orphans, found students who cannot pay their fees, you know, find old people in the villages, you know, help those people. In the Zoma Kasapota Kampira Kapa Bandiro. It's just. Everybody can have with their own opinion, right? Eh? Eh, what, what, what we are saying is that not all companies want to maximize profit. Some start putting a limit and create a, just a good image of themselves. Okay? Eh? It creates a big, good, big image. And sometimes that can also attract more business for you, more customers for you. Because customers will be saying, I think company, you eh? you will want to support a company, buy their products because they are doing good things for the society. Amagura mawiru chaya, amatani, amatani. So you, you feel good being associated with that company. So, what are the uh, what are the other factors, other reasons for limiting your profits, for controlling your profits? So goodwill, business goodwill, money money na yo. That's one goal. 
so that you have you are, you are, you you have a good standing with customers customer can still be supporting you they know supporting you makes you make profit but because that profit you you are doing good with it it's okay okay so some 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 companies they want to maximize goodwill okay And everybody, one, two, three, four. I only see about five people making notes. You guys, that's why you are fearing. I'm not surprised. Is this Mukuso Kaverenga? Come explanation in a minima Perega is not there. So you need to, to listen and say, I know. Kamini Musika Verenga is easy. And to my to my to my bullet to minima matenga kwaine. It will make very good sense. Muga Vesa so we know we know. Mungo karachete. <laughs> How will you remember? Okay. So, you want, sometimes this goodwill can actually keep, you can keep customers. Because your customers like your company. So you will be able to keep them. Now, what is the, what is the importance of making sure you keep customers? It's for long-term sustainability, right? Mm. It's f in the long term, whenever your customers are stuck with you, when you have customers or daily leaguer who will never leave you because of your good things, it means you always have business. Those of you who are doing marketing and other programs, you will see the, the need to retain customers. Come, customer retention is one of the goals of a business. Because that's, that's if, 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 if your business depends on customers, you need to keep what you have and get more. Those are policies. You cannot lose the ones you have. Keep what you have and add more. So you, you, I'm sure those who are in marketing, they, are very, they, they, they will agree with me. It's the things that you are learning. One of the milestones of uh, marketing. It's one of the goals. Okay. Sometimes some companies want to make their employees happy. So some companies will make profit but give it out to their employees in form of wages, good salaries. So some people, some companies want to be the best paying in, in town. And some, some of you, you, you go around and say, oh, company, I could have this company pays well. You don't want people to be, you know, rising up and say, ah, consider our salaries. Okay? That can be a goal. Some companies will make profit 
but to make sure they are the best in town. They can also recruit the best people and pay them well. Number one in their sector. Also, whether it is a banking sector, some banks want to be the best. Whether it is cement industry, some companies in cement, um, producing cement, some of them will say, we want to be the best company in terms of looking after our people. And that's their goal. So whatever profit they make, they make sure they improve the conditions. <laughs> this is a bad policy. Me as a good citizen, this is bad. Paying tax is, is apart from being law, it's a good thing to honor your taxes. So some companies just hate paying taxes. So they don't want to make a lot of profit because they know even if they make too much profit, government comes in and takes it. So why, why, what for? Why should, be working, why should we be working so hard and make huge profits only, only to discover that the government takes half of it? Okay? Because profits, you make more profit, you pay more tax. I think you have heard that I think from last year or the year before last, government of Malawi introduced a new tax system for companies. So if you make the normal profit, I think they pay about this 35%. So if you make 100 billion, they take away 35, you keep 65 billion. Now, they changed, they said, if you make profit more, which is more than 10 billion, only up to 10 billion, they will take away 35%. If you make profit more than 10 billion, any additional will be charged higher. Well, I don't want to put my, to put my opinion there, but that's what it is. So some companies will just try to avoid that. As their motive for not maximizing profit. So they will not be maximize, their goal will not be maximizing profit because of these things just to avoid paying a lot of taxes and things like that. So, when you are avoiding risk, it means you are avoiding maximizing profit. Remember we said the higher the risk, the higher the profit. The lower the risk, the lower the profit. So some companies are just happy to be making money. They don't want to make too much money which involves taking too much risk. So they are not aiming to maximize. Maximizing profit is also maximizing risks. Because the higher the risk, the higher the, the profit. So you say, ah, for me, as long as I make enough profit, it's okay. I will not take extra risks. Avoid take, taking extra risks. As a goal, These are 
business goals apart from the normal that we know that the business their goal is to maximize profit but no some don't others hide information so goal number five non-profit goal number five non-profit goal non-profit maximization goal what we are looking at is things that companies pursue different from what we normally know which is profit maximization. So some companies will not want to be seen to make too much profit. Why? Because others will be interested and join. And this is a, a, a common problem here in Marawi. In Marawi, once somebody starts a business and uh, there is profit, everybody goes there. We stop thinking of our own ideas. We start joining in others, people's ideas. We na kungo gura minibus. Ali yese mawa gura ma minibus. We na kungo gura ma tricycle. Mwa wana hili ya tatu mtaono. Two, three months later, Chuka Amfaguta Kupanganda Rama. Everybody goes into Ukagura Tumatu. What do you mean to the Pajiji? What do you mean to the Pajiji? Like K, when you went K, K. Keke. Huh? Keke. Keke. What does it mean? Oh. Okay. Well. So, some people, when they are in business, they will not show that they are making money in that business. Kumapelega my information wa boza. Ndi guruza, ndi utani, and yet ya kupanga nda rama zaidi. <laughs> Choli inga, safu na anzake atani, ajoine. Or deliberately, not trying to make a lot of money. Just making enough, so that the other people should not be attracted. So he, he, they can continue to be just a few of them. So you are actually broken potential competition as you are go number 6 is that goal which says dominance and leadership some companies just want to to be the biggest in the market to dominate. In marketing, what do you call that? A market leader. A market leader can be either volume or price. So, if it is a price, that is in relation also to cost of production. So you are the least cost producer in the market. Least cost producer and therefore a price setter. Others will come be behind you as price takers. The way you can go to this, this product, Ndasisa. Ariyesi kumbuyo go, ama inagurani, foro suti. 
Ukani na kuti product ita kweza. Ali yesi kumbuyo huko. Aina kutani ukweza. Because if they don't, you can kill them off. Um, let me tell you a story. I don't know whether... Wutoso is mugumaji amburaso. <laughs> so, in an industry, sometimes there are big guys, big boys, eh? In that business sector you are. And so you have to be careful. So, some companies want to be the big guys. This sometimes even happens uh, um, in banks. When interest rates change, usually there are there's one or two banks which are leaders. The others cannot start. Pamakara the bigger boys. The others come behind. So dominance can be a goal. Just to be big so you can control the market. Okay? Not necessarily maximizing profit, but being big. You know, you feel big and you have the powers to manipulate the market. Once you are big enough. Seven one is number seven is just um, survival. Safe interest of survival. Just to make sure you survive. You just make enough money. Enough profit to survive. That's all. So, what your goal is to prevent a loss. Your goal is not to maximize profit. But your goal is to prevent a loss. So you can continue existing. So you do everything possible to make sure you don't make a loss. That's your goal. It's not, your goal is not to make the highest profit. But to make sure you don't, get, to, you don't, you don't make a loss. So you can survive. You can exist. So sometimes, some motives is just to provide a service to the nation. You exist because you think what you are doing, you are saving people, you are saving the nation. That's your motive. Tandiza wantu. Tandiza ziko. Tawzina, tandiza zikoro, memini, kulemba nchitu anfambili mbili. You are not making very high profits, but you are so happy that you are employing a lot of Marawians. And that is what is motivating you. That motivates you so much. Hmm? Survival, you know, to survive, to survive, eh, means not to die, eh? Mm -hmm. So, so if you want to survive, 
you just make enough profit. Make sure you don't die. So to survive for a business is that you are, you are, you are not making a loss. Because if you make a loss, you will go out of business. Okay? To survive is just to make sure you make enough profit to stay in the business. Don't make a loss. That's what, that's your goal. So to, for you to survive is when you are not making a loss. Because if you make a loss, you will you, you close the company. So you, your motive is always work so hard that you don't make a loss. You should be able to break even. That's your goal. Can you see the difference between the aim of making as much profit as you can and this other aim of not, by all means, not making a loss? Are you seeing that they are different? The way I do? Mm -hmm. one, one person says, nah, I want to make as much profit as I can. That's your, your aim. Another person is working so hard that for me, I need to survive. I should by all costs prevent a loss in this business. These are two different motives. So this idealism and service motivation is about saving people. Maybe employment or maybe uh, goods that uh, people survive on or whatever. And you are providing a service. So you try to make sure that you do all things possible to exist because you are a good, a big employer, for example. Number nine, some of the goals are just to make sure you have cash flow. Yeah, we don't have time. So which one have you not understood? No, tell me. I'm on number nine now. I'm talking about the aim here is to make sure you have cash, liquid, can operate as, as, a, as a business um, motive or aim or goal is to make sure that you have cash. So you make sure that whenever bills have to be paid, whenever you have um, whatever bills, you are able to pay. Any obligations, financial obligations, you are able to pay. You don't reach what we call financial distress. So your goal is to make sure that whenever you have bills that need to be paid, you have the cash to pay. Nobody takes you to court. So your goal is to make sure you are liquid enough. Okay? Those who next uh, who will be doing uh, corporate financing, you will see will do a lot of about that. Those who choose to do corporate financing, as uh, especially those who are doing business, I think um, accounting and all that. It's another subject that I teach. Okay, so it's liquidity. It's a being ability to be able to meet your 
financial obligations and sometimes even at short notice. If you are not able to meet your financial obligations, you will have a financial distress. And if that financial distress continues, you can be declared bankrupt. So whenever you have problems paying, uh, you are meeting your obligations, for example, monthly obligations, paying people's wages, paying for your rent, paying for your water, paying for your electricity, paying for your raw materials. If you are not able to do that, just know if you are struggling, you are in financial distress. And if you don't handle it with care, it can lead you to bankruptcy. So some companies will work so hard to prevent that happening. They want to be liquid enough as a company go. So we learn how to prevent such things uh, in other courses. Eh? Okay, so you you can get that. Uh, this this is now attack uh, attaching people. What we have been saying now, uh, we are attaching people, uh, scholars uh, in economics, the big guys with ideas, is what we are trying to do in the, in the following slides. Um, your team leader was supposed to collect Kumati Nakaniga, which is a transfer file into his region. I hope, I hope you guys who are computer geniuses in here. After the class, you can come in, put it, share the, this slide. Okay? So there are all these other um, um, motives or policies um, there are so many, so we'll not we'll, because we want to do something else. Um, I will not. I will not continue to finish all the things that uh, people talk about when it comes to uh, profits, explanational profits, how businesses view profits, whether everybody is after profit. And what I know is that. No business, whatever option you go, whatever goal a business has, no business would accept to be making a profit, a loss. Despite whatever goals you have, whether you want to be a market leader, whether you want, whether because you are happy to be providing a service, whether you are, whatever, Profit has to be there. Because if you don't make profits, where, where will you find the money? You will close down. Okay? So it's the degree. Everybody wants to survive. But it's the degree. Because if you don't make a profit, whatever goals you are talking about will not, will, will not materialize. Because you will be closed. So you can read about those, especially those who will be doing managerial economics next time. Um, we, we will be looking at that, uh, of those things. Eh? Yeah. Now, let's, you guys yesterday you were making a lot of noise 
on the group about your uh, papers. The reason, the reason I didn't want to give out this is because, touch, turn switch off.